What is going on everybody? It is your boy Hobo here today and as you all can see we are playing some more Madden NFL 19 ladies and gentlemen today obviously we're doing more predictions and obviously it is going to be a great week in the NFL last week was a fun week especially for me a Giants fan we got our second win of the year on Monday Night Football and that makes me very happy, but as you can see on the screen right now, I've been saying that a lot, I don't know why. But um, we've got a great, great game scheduled on Sunday Night Football that I'm going to get to in a few minutes. But to kick off these predictions, we're going to start with tomorrow's game, Thursday, November 15th, 2018, 8.20 p.m. It will be the Green Bay Packers visiting the Seattle Seahawks. So now... Um, one team that to me has vastly overperformed is the Seattle Seahawks. I thought that they were going to be a bottom feeding five win team at the beginning of the year. And then there's a team that is very, very strongly underperformed in my opinion. And that is the Green Bay Packers. I thought for sure the Packers were going to be a lethal team at least offensively in the NFC North and to me they're just barely the second best team in that division I think the Bears are the unquestioned best team in the NFC North and then it goes uh, the Vikings next and then the Packers and to me that's kind of well I mean I guess you could toss up the Packers and the Vikings you know and any given Sunday one team will play better than the other but um, this game's going to be a fun one. You know, I don't really know who to pick. Uh, I, I, Aaron Rodgers versus Russell Wilson is always a fun matchup. They've met in the playoffs before. Their regular season matchups have been nothing short of classics. But I can't ever root against Aaron Rodgers. He's my favorite player in all of football. My favorite quarterback of all time. And uh, I think he'll get the job done. On Monday night, or excuse me, on Thursday night football against the Seattle Seahawks is Jared Goff. Boop, takes it in for six. In other news, Sunday's action kicks off at 1 p.m. on CBS with the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens. So, if Cincinnati shows up the way they didn't last Sunday against the Saints, and it's going to be an absolutely long day. But like I said in last week's video, I think that the, the Bengals don't get enough credit. I don't think they're a terrible team. I think that they're perfectly fine. I don't think that they're <laughs> they're great by a long shot. But I think that uh, for sure they should be able to come out here and, and pose a threat at least to these Ravens who offensively I don't think have a single chin hair on them. But defensively, the Ravens, uh, you know... They're not the worst unit, but they're not the best either. And uh, I, I'm going to take the Bengals in this game. This is another toss-up for me. I mean, really, you could go either way. But I like Cincinnati on the road in this game. So I'll take them in this divisional showdown. Let me get this playoff really quick. Then we'll focus on the next game. Holy cow. I don't know what that was. It'll be the Dallas Cowboys and the Atlanta Falcons meeting up on Fox. So the Cowboys... Um got thoroughly thrashed by the Tennessee Titans and then came away with a very close victory over their division rival uh, Philadelphia Eagles and now they're facing the Falcons whose offense is finally starting to get going and I think that this Falcons team is going to steamroll through the Cowboys who have little to no offense to speak of so that's going to that's going to be a fun game to watch for me anyway so yeah, I'm going to take the Falcons in that one. Next up, it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers traveling to East Rutherford to take on the New York Giants. And the Giants are hot. They're coming off their biggest victory of the season, momentum-wise. They beat the 49ers on Monday Night Football. It was a great game. Came down to the last play. Unbelievably fun. That game was to watch as a Giants fan. And now this game is going to be a little bittersweet. Eli Manning has to line up a, a cross from Jason Pierre-Paul. Of course, the Giants traded Pierre-Paul to the Buccaneers in the offseason for 
basically a bag of Lay's chips with no air left. And um, this is going to be a weird one because the Buccaneers have been a very wishy-washy team. And any given day, you can get the uh, Ryan Fitzmagic team or the not-so-Ryan Fitzmagic team or... You know, whatever the hell Jameis Winston tries to do, because it's certainly not play the quarterback position well. And the, and the Giants are much the same way. I mean, some days it's it's looked like Eli Manning... Ooh, excuse me, I did not mean to yawn right there. That came out of nowhere. I always have to record these videos late, guys. I work 10-hour days. So I, I can't do anything about it. But... <laughs> But uh, in any given day, you can get the gunslinger Eli Manning who throws two interceptions, throws for three touchdowns, 300 yards, and then loses. Or you get the Eli Manning that um, crumbles under no pressure and just falls and takes sacks randomly and trips over his own two feet. And that Eli Manning is fun to watch in his own right, but he'll still lose too. And yeah, it's so tough. You know, I'm going to pick the Giants because they're the home team. They're coming off a good win, a lot of momentum coming off their bye. And, um, sure, they're 2-7, and seven, but like Odell Beckham said, they could just run the table and we'll make the playoffs, but that's highly unlikely. But I'm going to hold out hope for anything to save this season. So I'm going to take the Giants, my favorite team, unequivocally in this game. So let's go, Giants. Next up on CBS, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Jacksonville Jaguars. So these two teams had two classic matchups last season. One in the regular, one in the post. And this year, I think it's going to be a completely different game. The Jaguars are a completely different team. They suck. So I'm going to take the Steelers in a big-time victory. They might even win a little bigger than they did against uh, Carolina. Excuse me, and that's going to be tough to accomplish, but the Steelers might score 40 points. <sighs> Excuse me, I'd really like to edit that out, but I can't. <laughs> but um, they might score 40 points on these Jaguars, and that's going to be very, very interesting because I don't think the Jags are that good. They really aren't. I mean, it's so crazy a difference a year makes, and... If they had just ditched the Blake Bortles experiment and traded for Eli Manning or traded for Johnny Manziel from the Canadian Football League, they'd probably be a better team in the AFC right now. But lo and behold, they're not even the second best team in their conference. Hell, they're not even the third best team in their conference. I think the Jaguars are the worst team in the AFC South. Yeah, that's right. I said it. The Titans clearly are the second best team. The Texans, I think, are the best team. And then the Colts, you know, they're they're pretty bad, but they're not as bad as the Jaguars have been. And, you know, I mean, honestly, saying that the Jags are the worst in the AFC South is not really a diss, because that division's extremely tough, surprisingly, somehow, after all the garbage it's looked like for the past, oh, I don't know, 15 years, as long as I've been alive. But I'm going to take the Steelers big in this game. Uh, <laughs> next up on CBS, the Texans visit the Redskins. And it's DeAndre Hopkins. It's Demarius Thomas. It's sadly not Will Fuller any anymore. I hope that he heals well from that torn ACL. And it's Deshaun Watson. And it's Lamar Miller. And I'm going to take them in this game. I really, really, really love me. Some Houston Texans. I've got my Deshaun Watson jersey hanging on the wall. Cannot wait for him to come out and just blow the roof off of the Redskins. They've had the best defense in the league playing a bunch of garbage offenses. And now I think they're going to get absolutely lit up on Sunday afternoon. Next up on Fox, it's the Panthers. It's the Lions. So... The Lions haven't looked great. They traded away arguably their best offensive player, Golden Tate. And the Panthers, sure, they got absolutely whipped by the Steelers on Thursday night last week. But um, I think they're a lot better than they look. Uh, than they looked 
last week on Thursday night. And I think that they're going to bounce back, have a good game, and beat the Lions. So that's my pick right there. I'm going Panthers over Lions. Next up, 405 on CBS. It's the Denver Broncos and the LA Chargers. The LA Chargers, I don't know why nobody's talking about them. They could easily go to the playoffs and win a couple of the playoff games. They're going to roll, steamroll the Denver Broncos, and it won't even be close. Alrighty, after that touchdown on the gameplay that you're watching, we're going to go straight to the 405 game on CBS between the Raiders and the Cardinals. I'm going to get flagged for running into the kicker. But the Raiders are terrible. The Cardinals are worse. Something's got to give. I think the Cardinals win this game if Josh Rosen just looks half sharp. So I'm going to take the Cardinals in this game. Next up, 425 on Fox. It's the Philadelphia Eagles and the New Orleans Saints. So, to me, arguably the most heartbreaking story in the NFL. Not, I mean, not really heartbreaking, but... I, I'm on the opposite end of social media when it comes to Des Bryant. Everybody's laughing at him. Oh, ha ha. Two days into practice, he tore his Achilles out for the air. Throw up the X as in waving for the medical staff. I mean, that's, a, that's not cool. It's a guy who worked hard to get back and to get back to play and that all got taken away from him by a freak injury and I really do feel bad for Des Bryant and I hope that he comes back better than ever and proves everybody wrong again so uh in other words or in other news the Eagles are bad and I'm going to take the Saints in this game they're gonna fly fly Saints fly who that all the way from Philadelphia to New Orleans it's gonna be a big time victory for the Saints and on Sunday Night Football the flex for this week the Minnesota Vikings will visit the Chicago Bears and boy oh boy does that Bears offense look like something you've ever seen before don't answer that because it certainly doesn't the Bears are freaking nuts I don't know where they came from but I kind of had this sneaky suspicion that the Bears were a lot better than they looked at face value and Jesus, have they absolutely blown me away. I'm going to take the Bears in this game. And I, I think that they win by one and a half scores. So that would be nine points. They'll probably win by nine points. If you don't count the extra point. <laughs> so, um, that's weird. I can't believe I just worded it like that. But I'm going to take the Bears in this game. I just really think that they're better than the Vikings. I don't have much analysis. Other than that, to go off of, other than Kirk Cousins' is buns and Mitch Trubisky doesn't look like crap. So, that's what I like about the Bears. Next, Monday Night Football, November 19th, 8.15 p.m. I said earlier in the video that this game was the Sunday night matchup. I lied. I was a day off. This is the Monday night matchup. It's the Kansas City Chiefs visiting the Hollywood Rams. And I know the Hollywood Rams look like crap on defense, which surprises me. They've got all that star power, but they're just not playing well at all on the defensive side of the ball. And frankly, their offense without Cooper Cup loses a big dimension. Cooper Cup was a big, big part of that def or excuse me, that offense, and now he is gone for the season with a torn ACL, and that's just. It's just terrible. It absolutely sucks if you are a Kansas City Chiefs fan or a fan of Cooper Cup as I am. Or excuse me, an L.A. Rams fan. I'm getting all my stuff mixed up tonight. I'm really tired. But, um, yeah, I feel bad for Cooper Cup, and I hope that he comes back and recovers uh, and plays better than ever. So a lot of big injuries this week in the NFL, and... You never like to see or hear that, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take the Chiefs in this game. I think their defense is finally starting to uh, figure out their identity with Justin Houston back. Now they're an even better team, and they're getting a little healthier. And you know, the season's a marathon, not a sprint, but you still gotta win the whole race. I don't know who said that. I think Drake said that. I don't know, but the Chiefs, I think, are built. To weather out this lengthy season. They're still including these games. Six more to go. 
I think, if I got my math right. And, you know, in order for the Chiefs to go to the Super Bowl, they're going to have to beat the Patriots. They're going to have to beat the Steelers in, you know, in, in tough environments. And they're probably going to have to play the Titans, maybe. And these are all pretty damn tough teams to play. And I know you might be looking at the Titans like, oh, the Titans. They're very good on defense, the Tennessee Titans are. And the Chiefs are really, really, <laughs> really going to need you know, to to get a big win like this against the powerhouse in the NFC in order to prove they can hang in the AFC. And, I mean, vice versa. The Rams need this huge win on Monday Night Football to really prove to people, yeah, our defense might suck, but guess what? We're still the best team in the National Football Conference. Both these teams are really playing for bragging rights in their divisions, or excuse me, in their conferences. And if the Chiefs win, they're undisputed the best team in the AFC. And if the Rams win, they're undisputed the best team in the NFC. And I think whoever wins this game ends up with the first seed in the playoffs, barring injuries, of course. Home field advantage throughout. And I think the winner of this game makes it to the Super Bowl. These two teams are so incredibly talented. I mean, my my early prediction for title games would probably be Chiefs, Patriots, AFC Championship. And Rams Saints NFC Championship. I don't know why I'm getting all this lag on PC right now, but um, maybe it's just because I was playing a bunch of Battlefield Five. Either way, yeah. I mean, this is gonna be a great game. I hope. I hope it's not a, a snore fest for four quarters. You know, defensive slug fest. I I hope that this uh, this game the offenses show up. Nobody gets flagged for roughing the passer like I just did. But um, I hope for a good game first and foremost. And yes, this game will be played in Hollywood uh, at, at the LA Coliseum because the field conditions in Mexico were so poor. Goddamn. Mexicans build the wall! As one famous orange man with a red tie and an American flag pin would like to say. I'm not saying I have a political preference either way. I'm just saying a man in, the white, a man in a White House would like to build a rather large wall keeping out the Chiefs and the Rams from playing in Mexico. In other words, my pick is the Kansas City... Did I already say my pick? Maybe I'm flipping. I don't remember what I said earlier, but I'm picking the Chiefs in this game. I think I did say the Chiefs earlier. Oh my god. It's been a long-winded explanation here, but... Yeah, but I take the Chiefs in this game, and it's going to be a damn good one. I really cannot wait to see Keeb Tlaib matched up on uh, Tyreek Hill, and... I... LaMarcus Joyner, Joe John, is that Joe John? I don't know what his name is. Johnson, Barron, I'm just reading off names now. But it's going to be a really fun game on Monday night, and I just wish we had better commentators to, uh, to emphasize the importance of this game because it really will have great importance down the line, you know, regarding who makes the, the Super Bowl and who does well in the postseason. I've already made my thoughts on the postseason and the Super Bowl abundantly clear between these two teams. But yeah, I, I, I'm, take, I'm taking the Chiefs. And that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen, for regular season week 11. If you want any more of this kind of stuff from me, make sure to hit that like button, drop a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button. Share the channel with all your friends, family, your neighbor, your dog, your Kansas City Chiefs fan, your Oakland Raiders fans, whoever you know, whoever you don't know, share it with everybody. We'll have a grand old time. So that's going to do it for me, guys, your boy Hobo, and I hope you enjoyed. Please make sure to join me next week as we break down week 12 in the NFL. But as for now, that's going to do it for me, your boy Hobo, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.